the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our text for today's message is taken from today's Palm Sunday lessons, Old Testament, Epistle, and Gospel, which were previously read. In the name of our suffering yet victorious Savior, Jesus Christ, dear people of God. Garbage truck driver Craig Randall sometimes brings his work home with him. There was that old-fashioned sewing machine that he salvaged. There were some books that he lifted from the trash. And then there was that Wendy's soft drink cup that just happened to be worth $200,000. Think about it. Treasures lifted from the garbage heap. An appropriate story for Palm Sunday. After all, it was from a garbage heap in Jerusalem that our salvation was lifted up upon a cross. In his book, Lift High the Cross, Pastor Robert Morgan tells about an unusual cross that stood one Lenten season in Dallas, Texas, on the lawn of Prince of Peace Lutheran Church. The cross was more than 10 feet high, but it stirred controversy within the community. This ugly cross was made of weapons of crime and violence, most of which had been uh, uh, confiscated by the Dallas Police Department. There were guns and pistols and knives and bayonets and bullets and bombs and broken glass. It was not easy to look at this cross. A lot of people hated the sight of it. And the reaction, I think, is understandable. A cross that reminds us of the suffering of people, but most importantly, the suffering of our God. A cross no one wanted to see. We need to talk about that cross that nobody wants to see. The cross that awaited Jesus when he entered Jerusalem. A cross of pain and love and ultimately hope for all people. This morning, let us focus on the cross that nobody wants to see, the cross of pain. Oh, how the crowds greeted Jesus as he entered Jerusalem seated upon a donkey. But that adulation was to quickly fade as Jesus climbs a hill called Golgotha, which is the town garbage heap. Jesus is undergoing all that is necessary to pay for our sins. He experiences suffering and pain, sorrow and desertion, hell and rejection, death and seeming defeat. His disciples had scattered for the most part like timid sheep fleeing for their very lives. Jesus is prepared to drink the cup he had asked his father to take away from him, yet always saying, your will be done. Jesus drinks from that bitter cup, the cup of hell and death, becoming the very sacrificial lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And he does it for you and for me and for all people. The nails that were driven into his hands and feet, the spear thrust into his side, directly into his heart, could not compare with what Christ really faced upon the cross. Rejection by humanity, but most importantly, rejection by his heavenly Father as Jesus becomes sin for us. And the heavenly Father's wrath and justice is satisfied by this wondrous sacrifice. Many of us here might remember the 1993 hit movie, In the Line of Fire. Perhaps you've seen it. It's certainly been shown on television a number of times. It stars Clint Eastwood as Secret Service agent Frank Horrigan. Horrigan has protected the life of the president for more than three decades, but he's haunted by the memory of what happened almost 30 years before. It's a young agent. He'd been assigned to President John Kennedy on that fateful day in Dallas. And when the assassin fired, Oregon froze in shock. For 30 years, he had wrestled with the ultimate question 
for a Secret Service agent, can I take a bullet for the president? If you remember the movie in the climax, Horgan does just that. He throws himself in the path of an assassin's bullet to save the chief executive. Secret Service agents are willing to do such a thing because they believe the president is so valuable that he is worth dying for. At Calvary, the situation is reversed. The president of the universe takes a bullet for you and for me and for all people. At the cross, we see how valuable we are in the eyes of God. The sinless Christ experienced the horrors of an unjust and hellish death to rescue us. I really like how Pastor Donald Strope puts it. Sin is not breaking God's laws as much as breaking God's heart. On Calvary, we see God's heart breaking. We see the pain and anguish caused by our sinfulness and the great and ultimate sacrifice made for each and every one of us. This morning, let us focus on the cross that no one wants to see, the cross of love. This is so very important for us to remember. Love is not an abstract concept in the Christian faith. God's love is a real, concrete act. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. John Patrick wrote a comedy play titled The Curious Savage. And in this play, a character by the name of Fairy May begins to question whether the people in the asylum really love her. They haven't said it to her that day, she feels. Mrs. Savage answers her query. People have said it to you already. They said, don't eat so fast, fairy. People say it when they say, take an umbrella, it's raining, or hurry back, or even watch out, you'll break your neck. There are hundreds of ways of wording it. You just have to listen and see it for yourself. And it's true, isn't it? How often are words cheap? Actions speak louder than words and then back them up in a concrete way. And actions do not speak any louder than they do at the cross of Jesus Christ. God not only tells us of his love, God shows and proves his love at the cross of our Savior. Jesus loves me, this I know, because his cross tells me so. Many years ago, when evangelist Billy Graham was in Asheville, North Carolina, preaching a crusade, a request was made for him to visit a man who had been an invalid for a number of years. As he entered the man's house, he really expected to find a depressed man who lived under the gloom of his handicap. Instead, he found the man to be vibrant and full of life. After a long visit, Graham asked the man, don't you ever get discouraged having to lie here like this all day long, week after week, month after month? Yes, the man replied. And from time to time, the devil comes in, walks over to my bed, and whispers in my ear, does God really love you, letting you suffer like this? And whenever that happens, the man continues, I just grab old Satan by the neck and I, grab him, and I drag him over to the foot of the cross and I make him look at Jesus dying for my sins and I ask him, doesn't he love me? That's the question that has given Christians hope through the centuries. Jesus loves me, this I know. And that leads us to focus our lives on the cross that nobody wants to see, the cross of hope. As Jesus hung on the cross, he felt the weight of the sins of the whole world upon his shoulders, but he also knew that his wounds, his pain, his sufferings would not be in vain. The purpose was to redeem, to buy back all of humanity from sin hell, and death. The prophet Isaiah makes it clear what Jesus' suffering was for us 
when he writes in chapter 50 of his Old Testament book, I gave my back to those who strike and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting. And again, Isaiah, hundreds of years before the coming of the Savior, proclaims his redeeming work and what it means for us when he writes, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his stripes we are healed. And with his stripes we are healed. Think about that. People are healed, made whole, complete by the cross of the Savior. For 2,000 years, the cross has been a unique symbol of a unique people. People who really believe that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. The cross changes everything. The cross of the Savior changes our lives because it makes us different. God's redeemed and holy people. Once again from the book, Lift High the Cross, by Robert Morgan, he tells about Dave Hutto, who's the founder of Camp Sumatonga, a camp for Christian youth near Irondale, Alabama, which is actually no more now than a suburb of Birmingham. And on the mountain above the camp is its well-known landmark, a huge lighted cross. One winter evening, a stranger came to Dave's house to see if Dave would take him up the mountain to that cross. Now, the trip would be dangerous because, an unex because of an unexpected snowstorm, which is rare in Alabama. And if you've never lived in Alabama, you've never seen those people drive in a snowstorm. You don't want to be in a car. I will just tell you that right now. But as they drove, the man explained why this was so important. The night before, he had set out in a small plane from Atlanta to Birmingham. He was in despair over his life and was considering even suicide. And as he contemplated his bleak options, the snowstorm overtook him. He became lost. He began to panic. The man radioed for help, but he couldn't tell the flight controllers where he was because of the snow, the clouds, and the fog had eliminated all the landmarks. Suddenly, out of nowhere, the man saw this glowing cross in front of him. He radioed the airport. They recognized where he was, and they were able to guide the man to safety. The workers at the airport explained the source of the cross. When Dave and the stranger reached the cross, the man bowed and prayed, telling Dave later, God found me when I was lost. That cross saved me and I will never be the same. That is what the cross of Jesus Christ does for people. It gives us hope because it guides us back to God and his mercy in spite of our sinfulness. God opens his arms and greets us with forgiveness and love. Such love given through hellish sorrow and pain gives us hope now because our lives are changed. They are different. The cross of Jesus Christ is not a pretty sight amid the garbage heap, but it is still a treasure, the greatest treasure of all, our salvation from sin, hell, and death. And it is, brothers and sisters, this great treasure that we are challenged to share with others, for there should be no silent saints. God's people should be lifting up the cross of Jesus at all times and in all places. Share the treasure that gives God's great love, mercy, and forgiveness. Share the treasure that opens up heaven for all eternity. Share and live the treasure that saves from sin, death, and hell. Just think what a great Easter gift that could be to someone else. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, gracious Lord, we look upon the horror of the cross. We shield our eyes as we see you in agony. 
because you were paying for our sins there. And yet we rejoice from the depths of our hearts because we now have your love, your mercy, and your forgiveness as we come to you in faith. Help us to live that good news and to share unhesitatingly that good news with others that together we may proclaim your greatness and your goodness to all. This we ask in the name of Jesus, our Savior, the treasure for all time. Amen.